Hello everybody and welcome back to the Slack and Armchair Supporter channel. I'm here for the match preview. It's West Ham versus Liverpool. And well, it's been a bit of a <sighs> disappointing week, shall we say. Liverpool are out of the title race. <sighs> you know, it'll be a miracle if we're still in the title race. I just don't see City and Arsenal dropping points. West Ham are, <sighs> are probably having a not as good a season as they were expecting. So this game is going to be a bit unpredictable. I don't know how to really predict it. I'm going to do my best anyway. Before I do get into it, please like the please like the video if you're enjoying it. And also hit that subscribe button. We're so close. I just want to say thank you as well to everybody. That stream from two nights ago, the Everton game, was absolutely massive. So many viewers. We gained some new people. So happy to have you all on board and so close to the, get to the the goal of 150 subscribers. Just 10 more to go. So please, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. So let's get into my match preview. And well, let's start with West Ham's form. Um, the game is away. So we are going to the London Stadium. Um, that's going to be, it's a half 12 kickoff. So again, I'll be live um, about 12 o'clock about 30 minutes before kickoff, um, just getting into the game. So the, as I said, let's get into the form. West Ham, they're having a bit of a mixed bag, really. They're eighth in the league. They've played 34. They've won 13, drawn nine, lost 12. Um, their last five is pretty damning. They've lost three of their last five with one win and one draw. And the last time out was against Palace. It was away to Palace, so it was a Sellers Park. It's a 5-2 loss which is, well, we can't really talk. Crystal Palace came to our back garden and stomped on us, didn't they? So, <clears throat> can't really say anything about Palace, but I just expect them games to be, you know, a bit more even. I don't know, I wouldn't have expected Palace to go and walk all over 5-2 um, anyway, not put five past them. Um, and then, also... Their form, I th I think the reason, like, obviously, they're, they're going to be trying to get back into Europe because they've been in Europe this season, of course, and I think that is the issue. I think their exertions in Europe is what has maybe derailed them a bit. Um, and on that, they did just get knocked out of the, the Europa League, same same evening as Liverpool got knocked out, um, the 18th of April. Um, but they were playing probably the favourites to win it. They were playing Bayer Leverkusen, who are still unbeaten in all games all season. Um, so, you know, it's kind of difficult to go up against a team like that. But West Ham, they lost um, the 11th of April, the first leg. Um, they lost 2-0. And then the second leg that was at their home stadium, it was a 1-1 draw. So Leverkusen went through and that's when they were knocked out, 18th of April. Um, so, yeah, I think that's possibly why they've um, not found it so comfortable this time out um, in the Premier League. Um, especially with that ex ex sort of extended run into the latter stage of the, the Europa League. Um, and then the head-to-head. -head, I completely forgot that we played them in the Carabao Cup, but we did. But more on that in a minute. So the head-to-head -head so far, Liverpool, 24th September at Anfield. Liverpool won 3-1. There was goals from Nunes, Jota and Salah scored a penalty um, early on in that game. I don't really remember. It seems like an age ago now, 24th of September. And then also, like I said, we played them in the Carabao Cup as well in the water final, I believe it was, on the 20th of December. I don't remember that. That seems like an age away. Um, so the 20th of December, we played them quarterfinal Carabao Cup. Liverpool won 5-1 at Anfield. And I don't remember that either. That is just... So much has happened since then that it's just completely gone out of my mind. So... Now on to Liverpool. Well, Liverpool, like I said earlier in the video, out of the out of the Premier League race, definitely at this stage. I really don't see unless I'm Pep Guardiola has come out and said, you know, what's happened to Liverpool can happen to us. It can happen to Arsenal. I don't see three teams in a title race going on and losing two must win, should win games in a title race, especially not his Manchester City and especially not this this um. Arsenal team either. They're both very good teams. Um, yeah, but, I'm, you know, obviously I'm going to enjoy the Liverpool matches between now and the end of the season. Well, I hope I'm going to enjoy them. I'm going to watch them anyway. And then, of course, I'm just going to enjoy the title race as it unfolds, see who wins, who wins, gets there. I do. I'm, I think I might be the only Liverpool fan, but I am hoping that City get it over Arsenal, um, if you want to know why. 
just ask the ask the question in the comments and I'll I'll explain my reason and why. Or maybe I'll do it in a different video come the end of the season. Who knows? But um, yeah, if you're curious to know why my reasoning is, ask me at any stage or even in my live stream, I'll tell you why. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping I'm I want City more than Arsenal. But um, yeah, Liverpool. Back to Liverpool. Sorry, we can't keep playing like we did against Everton. It's the same against Palace. It was the same against United. It was the same against United in the cup. It's just so lethargic, so dull. There's no approach. There's no energy. If we don't get the goal in the first 10 minutes, it's like, meh, why bother? And then if we concede in the first 10 minutes, it's, it's certain. It's like, oh, we're just going to lose this game. There's just no... Oh, there's just no, like... What's the, I don't even know what the word I'm looking for. I just have I just have no confidence in Liverpool like pulling off a result. Like some like we went and played really well against Fulham, changed the team, played really well, and um, then we go and put in a performance like that against Everton. It was absolutely shocking. It was abysmal and definitely not worthy of the title. So we are where we deserve to be. We are the, the third best team in the league. We've gotten away with it a bit. Um, we've been a bit lucky at times. We've been heavily unlucky as well. We've had it both ways. Like, you know, you can go back to VAR decisions. We should have had a penalty against Arsenal, penalty against City, the goal that was disallowed against Spurs. You know, we've had it against us as well. But I do feel we've had a bit of luck as well. Maybe not necessarily with VAR, but, you know, getting results, you know, like late last minute winners and that, you know, which is sort of, inflated our position but I, we are the third best team in the league and I think we sh we finished third that's probably where we deserve to be so let's get into my score prediction again I really just don't know what to do um, I'm not going to go against Liverpool I never will um, I might do a draw the odd time but I'm never going to put it against Liverpool they're my team I want them to win so I'm going to predict a Liverpool win it depends what Liverpool team shows up if it's the team that I've predicted, maybe we get something from the game. If um, if it's not, then unfortunately I think we're going to lose it again um, because it's the same players going out there, putting in, bought, putting in poor performances and just not, just not turning up in games. Just not turning up in games and then having teams run all over us. So let's get into my lineup. I'll let you guys know what I've done. And here we go. This is it. So, Allison in goal, of course. He's still an incredible goalkeeper. I know he's letting a lot of goals, and he could have definitely done better against Everton. But, you know, if you haven't got the, the four men in front of you doing what they should be doing, you, your job is automatically harder. Straight away, it's harder. And unfortunately, he's, yeah, obviously, you know, you look at him because he's the one who's supposed to keep it out, but... When everybody, when the ten in front of it, the all ten of them in front of him is so bad, you know, you can't really blame him. So, and also, you know, what would you do bringing Kelleher? I know Kelleher has he he played really well when Allison was injured, but Allison is our number one, you know. So obviously he's going to start. Um, Robertson and Trent as right back and left back, of course they're they're brilliant. In their own way, of course, they they are amazing. Just performances recently have been poor. Just nobody, like Robertson was the one a few weeks ago, I was saying he's the only one with a bit of passion in the team. But Everton, he, it, was just, it was just an over. I'm just going to stop saying it. It was an overall poor performance by everybody. And yeah, Robertson as well. So then at centre-back, I've gone with Van Dijk and Kwanzaa. Um, I think Canate should be dropped. Again, it's just too many poor performances. Um, into midfield, I've gone with Endo, McAllister and Gravenberg. I don't know why Endo and Gravenberg didn't start against Everton. These are all must-win games. You want to win the title, they're must-win games. Um, well, they were all must-win games. Endo and Gravenberg were the best two midfielders on the pitch when it came against Fulham, and they were dropped. And he brought in Sabosli and Jones, who have done absolutely nothing for months. So... I don't know what they have to do to get in the team. I really want them to be in the team. Whether I, whether they'll start or not, I don't know. This is what I would go with. 
Um, and then up top, it's unfortunate that I can't take Salah out of there, to be honest with you. I would not have Salah there. The only thing is, I think he's somewhat better than Nunes. So that's why he's there ahead of Nunes. I would get rid of both of them. Um, if Jota was available, he'd be in there. Um, I was thinking about putting Dan's in there. I just don't see Klopp starting Dan's, um, unfortunately. Unfortunately for Dan's, because I do quite like him. He seems to have something about him. He's got a bit of strength. He throws himself in. He, he's, you give him a task and go and do it, and he, he'll stand up. You know, he stand up for the badge. He stand up for the shirt, and that's what I like about him. Um, bit of an attitude to him. You know, there's a bit of an aura around him. Um, I just, unfortunately, I just don't see Klopp starting him. Um, so that's why I've got, and you can see I've, I've changed it around a bit as well. I've gone with Gakpo on the left. Gakpo was incredible. The two times he's played from coming in from that left-hand side, he's like a different player. And Diaz on the right-hand side is like a different player to being on the left-hand side. So I went with that initially and then went for the centre forward. And I came to the conclusion of Salah. And why not just put him through the middle? You want him to score goals. It can't get no easier than if he's in the centre of the bloody pitch up front, is it? So put him there. Diaz and Gakpo on the right. And if Salah's having another stinker, bring him up at Dan's on. Um, so that's my lineup in full. Uh, let me know what you think, guys, how I did. If you think that's a bad choice, good choice, what you'd change, let me know. So in full, that is Allison, Robertson, Van Dyke, Kwanzaa, Trent, then Endo, McAllister, Gravenberg, Gakpo, Salah, Diaz. Yeah, please, guys, let me know. And um, yeah, thanks again, everybody who tuned in. Really do appreciate it. Um, yeah, it was really great, that stream the other night as well. I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. As you can see, I'll be just a little bit before kickoff. And yeah, if you haven't already, please like the video and also subscribe. Um, I hope to get to that goal as quick as possible. That'd be amazing. Before the season, 150 subscribers. Yeah, thanks again. And I'll see you in the stream. Until then, up the fucking reds.